it. It's Monday, which means it's time for our weekly box office report brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Coming in the number one spot in an upset for the second week in a row is the Tom Cruise film Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, making $29.4 million in its second week of release and dropping only 47% from its opening weekend. Coming in second place and having to be considered the biggest box office disappointment of the year is the new Fox film Fantastic Four, which brought in just $26 million, nearly half of its original $40 to $50 million estimate. Coming in the number three position is Thriller, the Thriller, The Gift, which exceeded most Michael Jackson's Thriller. Thriller! <laughs> <laughs> the Gift, which exceeded most expectations with $12.7 million. And fourth is the Comedy Vacation, making $9.1 million in its second week of release. And rounding out the top five is Marvel's Ant-Man, making $7.8 million in its fourth week of release. John, what stands out to you in this week's box office report? Well, obviously, the biggest story here is the gift. No. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't that be great if that was the biggest story? First of all, congratulations. Look, I, I got to call it like it is. On Friday, we did our box office prediction segment. I whiffed. The only one I got right was Ant-Man in the number five spot. Everything else, <laughs> totally wrong. I had Sean the Sheep in the top five. I, I mean, it was, I my, my bracket was a mess this week. Anyway, that being said, um, yeah, what can we say about Fantastic Four that hasn't been said already? It's, it's I but I, you know what? I still thought people were going to go. And clearly the, the, the word of mouth got out so fast and became so viral so quickly that people just kind of avoided it in droves. But the gift is, all joking aside, a really nice surprise because this movie is getting fantastic reviews. This small little directorial debut, I think it's his debut for Joel Edgerton, mm -hmm. who stars in the movie and directs it. Everybody's raving about that film, so it's really cool to see it do well. And, you know, Ant-Man. Look, Ant-Man had the biggest potential to be the first Marvel bomb. Like, who the hell goes to see a movie called Ant-Man? It's ridiculous. Um, and yeah, I love the movie, whatever. Four weeks has stayed in the top five. Um, it probably will drop out of the top five with a couple other little films opening up this week, but still very, very positive to see. Anyway, Mark, what stands out to you about the box office? Uh, the fact that justice was served at the <laughs> movies this weekend. I mean, look, this is nice because it legitimizes what we do on a daily basis, that we get to talk movies and tell fans, look, this looks cool, this doesn't look so good. We've seen these movies ahead of time. Fantastic Four, I wanted to love it. I was maybe the last guy off the ship right before I saw the movie. I said, no, look, the trailers look good. But unfortunately, the movie was horrendous and the box office receipts show that. And people are like, you know what? I'm not going to waste my time seeing this because I've heard so many good things about Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. I'm going to yeah. go check that out. Or people who saw it wanted to go see it again. And I love when movies can do that. When a good movie can beat a bad movie at the box office, that's fantastic news. And The Gift and Ricky and the Flash both opened in less than half the theaters of Fantastic Four and still managed to pull in better numbers and obviously better reviews. Or at least if you, you know, $12 million for for the gift, okay? Then you had $26 million for Fantastic Four. So if you look at all the reviews of the gift, they were very positive, and that if the gift had as many theaters as Fantastic Four did, it probably would have been neck and neck with it. That's amazing feat to me. And Ant-Man is not as known of a property as Fantastic Four. So going into it, so you're like, oh, well, Ant-Man could have had the same trouble Fantastic Four did, but again, the movie was great, the reviews were great, and that's why people want to keep showing up to the theater to see this. So this is great news for me. I'm glad you brought up, you mentioned, because I really, I, I can't believe I'm, I'm forgetting to mention Mission Impossible only takes a 47% drop from mm -hmm. week one to week two. And really, it is it, it is a great tribute to how fun that movie is. It's a true, great summer, fun movie, yet smart, well-performed, the whole bit. So, yeah, kudos to them. Anyway, Adrian, you saw the box office uh, reports. Now, until you know, Hitman is at the number one spot, your thoughts about this week's? From your mouth. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was just thinking that the, the first time I come on this show just happens to be the weekend after Fantastic Four has opened, and I have a movie coming out from Fox. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. This is a sabotage <laughs> happening. It's a hatchet job. Like, can I just skip over Fantastic Four? No, look, obviously Fantastic Four is, uh, you know, um, a disappointment. I'm, I'm sure Fox is very disappointed by it as well. Everyone worked their butts off on that movie. I, you know, same people who are working on, on, on our movie are working on that movie, so I know people are disappointed, but we'll see what happens in the next few days. What stands out for me is the gift. Right, uh, you know, not only because of the thriller that I hadn't even really heard anything about, but at the same time, it's a, a film from SDX, and it's their kind of the first project, and I think that's going to put that uh, company on the map in a big way. Ant Man, I'll tell you, Marvel is now the biggest brand in movies. I never thought Ant Man would do these numbers, even after yeah. I saw it. It's a good movie. I, I wasn't in love with it. I, I didn't hate it. It's a good, entertaining movie, but. 
hitting for 165 million is amazing. And Mission Impossible, it's so good that I want more and more people to go see it. So I'm happy that it's doing what it's doing. Vacation, I know everybody seems to hate it on this show. I loved it. I was laughing for two hours. You did not hate it. I en I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was a great film, but I laughed constantly throughout. Even if, when I was giggling, I was like, okay, you guys are just going ridiculous with the poop humor. The it still made me chuckle. The chuck. Charlie Day sequence is worth the price of admission. <laughs> right. uh, so I, 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 I loved Fantastic uh, uh, Vacation. So... Not not a lot of surprises for me outside of the gift, and I was hoping Fantastic Four does better because it's the Fox family, but it wasn't in the cards. The one thing I was a little bit surprised of because I did put Sean the Sheep in my I predictions saw that. as top five, and I thought you know a kids movie, yeah. whatever, um, did very poorly. I mean, it, four million opening. I think it came in seventh place for yeah. opening way, but I, I finally went to see it because I didn't see any of the advanced screenings. I was too busy, but I went to go see it this weekend. I really enjoyed that little movie. No dialogue. Like, no dialogue in the movie, and yet Which I was... Which isn't the really, best-selling point. No, not the, the great best-selling point. You think, well, this is going to be odd, but I'm telling you, man, I was I was entertained for 90 minutes. I sat down, I watched it, I thought it was really cute, really adorable, and uh, I thought it was going to do better. It did not, but let's see if it's got any legs, if any positive word I mean, about it. With minions and, uh, and Inside Out in the market, it's just so difficult. It is through. difficult. It's a difficult yeah. time.